surface dwellers. I am here today from the bottom of the ocean to show you how to draw. Today, we're going to draw an underwater scene. One which I think you'll enjoy. Brought to you by Tiki Fez Comics. Fantastic. But first, let me change. I'm Stephen Harper. I'm an artist, but I'm also an author. I write comic books and graphic novels, like Quest for the Golden Butterfly, out soon from Tiki Fez Comics. I want to show you how to draw this underwater scene, action-packed with all kinds of sea life, sharks, an octopus, a sunken pirate ship, even some coral. CORAL! I'm going to show you step by step, line by line, shape by shape, how to draw this picture. All you have to do is follow along with me as I go. If at any point during the drawing you want to change something, or do something slightly differently, or majorly differently, uh, something to make the drawing your own, go right ahead and do that. It's perfectly okay. What I'm trying to do is give you a starting point and give you some ideas for your own drawing. You will need some paper. You will need a pencil, or a pen, or a crayon, or a big stick, and a stretch of sandy beach. Go ahead and get the paper and pencil now. I'll wait. Are you ready to dive into this picture? Great! So am I. Let's go. To get things started in our undersea drawing, I always like to start with a shark, because sharks are awesome. I'm going to start my shark about in the middle of my page and I'm going to start by just drawing a flat line. You now, from this flat line what I'm going to do is I'm going to curve a line up and back. This is going away from the shark's face. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to imagine, remember how to draw an imaginary line? We're going to imagine a little bit. I'm going to come about underneath of here and I'm going to draw a line that curves up to meet it. The next thing I'm going to do is another flat line. Going back up to the nose of our shark, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right where I started my first line and I'm going to curve a line down. I'm going to stop underneath the fin. What I do next is I'm going to come up a little bit above that line and I'm going to draw a letter V. Remember a letter V goes down, comes back up. I need to imagine where this line continues underneath that letter V and then comes up to almost touch that line right there. Almost, but not quite. Now, we're ready for the tail, don't you think? I know, I just I tell all kinds of tales. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to curve a line up and back just like I did with the fin. And on the bottom side of it, I'm going to curve a line down and back for the tail. What we need to do next is connect those two lines by drawing a letter C. It kind of makes a moon shape. Sharks have kind of sharp tails. Up at the front of the shark, I need to put the mouth, because honestly, whenever I think about sharks, that's all I think about. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put a great big frown, just a curved line, in that front half of the shark. Now, of course, I can't think about sharks without thinking about teeth. Underneath that, I'm just going to put kind of a row of letter V's. A letter V, a letter V, a letter V, a letter V, a letter V. Uh, underneath there to look like some shark teeth. Now, if you want, you can put them across the bottom edge too. Some people like to do that. It's okay by me. Up above that, sort of about in the middle of the mouth, I'm going to slant a line up, like that. And at the bottom, I'm going to put a curved line that goes up to meet it. Because I think about sharks as being kind of mean and grumpy. I don't know that they are. I've never actually spoken with any sharks. They might be perfectly happy. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to put just kind of a letter V, a very skinny one, inside there to make that sort of mean, grumpy eye. Now, next thing I need to do is I need to give some gills to my shark so my shark can breathe. What I'm going to do to draw the gills, I'm going to draw just three curved lines. Right there. 
and that's our shark. The next thing I think about in our undersea drawing is I think about what I might want to find underwater. And you know what I would love to find? A pirate's chest full of treasure. That would be awesome. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to start in the bottom right hand corner a little bit above it. I'm not going to start too close to the bottom edge. I'm going to start by just drawing another flat line. Don't want to make it too big, not too small, just like Goldilocks make it just right. Now from each end of this, I'm going to angle a line up and to the right, up and to the right. And I'm going to connect those at the top with another flat line. Boom, there we go. That shape kind of looks like a rectangle that you didn't build quite right. And it's kind of leaning over and it's about to fall. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to draw two short straight lines that just go up from each back corner. And I'm going to connect those two lines with a flat line. To make this look like a pirate's chest with a curved top on it, what I want to do is I'm going to put a curved line on this side makes it look a little like a letter D. If you haven't gotten that far in the alphabet yet, it's just a straight line with a curved line next to it. I'm going to do the same thing on this other side, except on this side I'm going on the outer edge of our pirate's treasure chest. So we have a D over here, a D over here. Next thing I need to do, from three corners of my treasure chest, I'm going to drop a line going straight down towards the ground. One line here, one line here, one line here. And across the bottom edge of these open spaces, I'm going to put a row of curved lines that kind of overlap to look like some sand or maybe the mud down at the bottom of the ocean where this treasure chest might have fallen. The next thing we need to do is fill that treasure chest full of treasures. Now what I'm going to do is just some circles, Maybe a crown shape if you want. Some more circles. I kind of like to pile mine in the middle, almost like a triangle to make it look like it's mounted up. But you can fill up that whole shape if you like. Don't worry about overlapping them, it's okay. It doesn't really look a whole lot like a treasure chest yet, does it? No, it doesn't. So what I'm gonna do I'm going to make it look more like a treasure chest. I'm going to go up and across and down with a line. Same thing on this side edge. I'm going to do a line that goes up, slants up, and drops back down. Now inside this, I'm going to do a little line of circles. Not too many, just sort of scattered here or there to sort of look like maybe bolt heads or nail heads holding it together. Now you can also try drawing some letter C's there. You know a pirate's favorite letter, right? Tis the C! Now, to make my pirate treasure chest look like it's made out of wood, I'm going to put some lines across the bottom edge here. Just a line that starts from this side and go in there. Same thing here, I'm going to angle them up about the same way that is. To make that look like wood, we have to put some wood grain in it. I like to start off with just kind of a squiggly line, and then two or three lines around it. I try to make these lines a little bit thinner than my first lines, uh, so that you can tell the difference between the pieces of wood and the spaces in between them. So just three or four lines going across each one of these rectangular shapes. Same thing here, and you want to keep them going parallel to the lines at the top and bottom. Parallel just means that two lines are going right beside each other. They don't get any closer, they don't get any farther. Parallel. I'm going to do the same thing up at the top. I'm going to start by showing these metal bands. Not that kind of metal band. I'm going to show that by drawing a smaller letter D inside this with some small letter C's around it. Maybe a little bit of wood grain inside there. 
across the top edge of this, I want it to also look like it's made out of wood. So I'm going to draw just three or four lines going across here. And again, with some wood grain inside of that. And two or three lines in this letter D. With some wood grain. One more thing we're going to add to our treasure chest, a line of U-shapes along the outside edge of the treasure, just to make it look like it's sparkling and shining. Just a row of U-shapes. Now that's looking like a proper pirate chest. Before we move further back into our background, we're still up in the foreground right now, but I want to draw some undersea coral. Coral! So what I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine a shape a little bit like a person with their arms up. Just throw your hands in the air. That's how I like to draw coral. So I'm going to come over here about in the middle of my page. I'm going to draw kind of a wavy line going up not too far up, and another one beside it, not too close. Then what I'm going to do is put a wavy line that goes off to the side, comes back up, wavy line off to the side, comes back up, those are the hands, and I'm going to draw a line that comes down and goes in, a line that comes down and goes in, and then a line up at the top. It goes up taller than either one of those, comes back down. The wavier this line is, the better it looks. Now up at the top of each one of these, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little hot dog shape up at the top of each one of these. And you could put some more of those around if you like. To make it look like some little places where fishes might swim in. I want another type of coral next to it, so what I'm going to do is kind of just a wiggly line that goes up, across, and back down with a little hot dog shape at the top of it. And from the edge of that, I'm going to draw another wiggly line that goes up, across, and back down with hot dog shape at the top of it. And just two or three of those in a cluster. Back up, across, and down. Little hot dog shape. Now across the bottom edge of these, again, I'm just going to put some frowny lines They kind of make it look like it's growing out of the mud underneath the sea. To move into the background, what I'm going to do next is put a ground line all the way across. You do have to pay attention and don't draw over the things we've already drawn. You have to draw around our coral and you have to draw around our pirate chest. I'm going to start about a third of the way up my page and just draw a line that goes across, draw around your coral. Stop when you get to your treasure chest and draw on the other side of that. It doesn't have to be a straight line. In fact, it shouldn't be a straight line. Next thing I'm going to put in my picture is a sunken pirate ship because that's where the gold came from. I'm going to start a line from my ground line that's going to curve up just like that. And then I'm going to draw a slanted line that's just going to come down to meet my ground line. Now you might have to draw around your coral. Looks a little bit like the shark's nose when we first start that off. Next thing I'm going to do, from the very front of, the, of that, I'm going to draw a skinny little upside down letter V. That's called the bowsprit. That's up at the very front of a sailing ship. Next thing I'm going to do, same thing like we did with our treasure chest. I'm going to draw some lines that just go back parallel to the top edge. Now remember, a parallel line means that they travel along together, they never meet, and they're never going to cross. Parallel lines. Next thing I'm going to do is show where these boards might meet. I'm just going to draw some lines that go from the top of a shape to the bottom. You don't want them to line up, you want to kind of stagger them. So one right here, maybe one here, Maybe one over here, maybe one down here. 
And then on each side of those, I'm going to put just a couple of small circles. Maybe two, maybe three, to look like some nails or something holding it together. If you can only fit one, just put one. Now, sometimes I like to show how the boat sank. Maybe you got a big cannonball through the side of it, left a big hole. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw a jaggedy zigzag shape. Zigzag, 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 zigzag. And I'm going to fill that shape in uh, dark. Now you can, if you're going to color it later or paint it later, you can do that. I'm just going to go ahead and fill mine in. Perfect. Now we've got a big gaping hole in the side of our ship. Can't sail that way. Now the next thing I need to do, I want to show the mast and the sails, but since it's a ship wreck and not a ship, they won't be in the exact right place. I'm going to start a line about where the top line of the ship meets the ground line. I'm going to draw, draw two parallel lines. Again, draw around your coral. And I'm going to put a jaggedy zigzag line up at the top to show how it kind of broke off. Two lines going off this way. They get a little closer and then meet. Two lines that go off this way. They can meet or they might touch the pirate ship. Uh, just whatever really happens. Next we're going to put just two or three little curved smiley lines, however many you can fit, just two or three usually works about right. And then inside each one of these U shapes, I'm going to put just two or three other little curved lines. To make it look like how the sails were kind of gathered up, maybe during a storm or something. And then I want to just put some little like curvy letter V's or something underneath that to maybe look like the sails are old and weathered underwater uh, or maybe there's some seaweed or slime or something that kind of drips off of them. So kind of just like a letter V, maybe two, something like that. Oh, that's looking like a fine shipwreck. Next, I might want to put two or three parallel curving lines though maybe some down here, to sort of look like parts of the mast as well. Before I start in with some more fish, I'm going to put a line of waves all the way across the very top edge of my page. So what I'm going to do here is just some smile lines, smile line, smile line, smile line, all the way across the top edge, just to make it look like we're underwater. Now, I want to put some fish in here. The cool thing about fish, you can take almost any type of line, any shape, and you can turn it into a fish. Let me show you what I mean. How about a triangle? Let's try it. <laughs> try angle. I'm going to start by drawing a triangle. Now, I'm going to put another triangle right behind it, a smaller one this time. That already starts to look like a fish. Now, I need an eye for it, don't I? I need to put an eye. So, I'm going to put a circle, and I'm going to put a dot somewhere in the circle. If you want it looking up, or down, or front, or back, that's where you put the dot. Let's make him looking back behind him. Now, what we're going to do is put a little smile. Or is that a mustache? Now we might want to do some kind of decorations or designs on this fish, don't you think? We might want to put uh, maybe some stripes. So I'm just going to draw some letter V's, maybe one up the, on the nose. Uh, some letter V's back here by the tail. Now we have a fish. Let's try a different shape. What about a circle? Well, let's try it. I'm going to start up here with a circle. Now, I'm going to put a triangle for the tail. Now here I might need to do something a little bit different. I'm going to draw a first line that angles back, goes up to meet the body. This line, same thing, angles back, goes to meet the body. A roundy fish. Now, I'm going to put 
an eye. Of course, because you need to be able to see. So I'm going to put an eye, maybe I'm going to have him looking ahead at the shark. Now you might say to yourself, why does this fish look so much bigger than the shark? Well, because it's closer to us. As things get closer, they look like they get bigger. And as things get farther away, they look smaller. So this fish is a very small fish, but it's closer to us. Now, I might want to put some sort of uh, a mouth on this, so I'd put a smile on this one. Now, maybe we want to do something with this one. Maybe we want to have polka dots on it. A nice polka dot fish. A lot of times, fish are lighter on the bottom, on their tummy, on their belly, and they're darker on the top. Now, I can show this couple of different ways. One thing I could do is just draw a line all the way across the bottom edge of my fish uh, to show the, the difference in color. Or when I'm coloring or painting this, I can just leave the bottom edge kind of white and color the top. That's the way I like to do it. But if you want to draw a line, let me show you how. You just draw a line. I kind of draw around the mouth and of course draw the edge back there by the tail. What if I were to draw a shape that started and went uphill, then dropped down and went forward? Can I turn that into a fish? Let's find out. What I'm going to do here for this fish, I'm going to drop that line down just a little bit, and I'm going to curve that line all the way back here to the tail. What I'm going to do next, from the very top edge, I'm going to draw a line that goes up and drops back down to meet the tail. From the bottom here, I'm just going to draw a line straight down that goes back up to meet the body. And then I'm going to draw a circle for the eye. Maybe this time a bigger circle around it. Ooh, kind of like a raccoon fish. I like that idea. Next thing, I want to draw again just a circle so we can see where the fish is looking. This fish needs a tail. Remember we said about the shark, tails curve back away from the head. Uh, that makes the fish swim faster. That way they're streamlined. So I'm going to curve a line up and back, down and back, and I'm going to connect them maybe with a wavy line this time because it's a kind of different fish. Again, to show how the coloring is on the top of the fish and not on the bottom of the fish, I might draw a line all the way across there. And then we think about some sort of design, some sort of pattern, some sort of lines or shapes or something like that. What if I just outlined all the shapes that are there already? Could that work? Sure. Now, at the back on the tail here, I might want to put some sideways U shapes and then maybe some upside down U shapes along this top fin and this bottom fin. One thing that I often like to do for these pictures, to show that we're underwater, I like to show some bubbles. To show some bubbles, what I'm going to do is start by the mouth of any fish. I'm going to draw a small circle, and then above, a little bit larger circle, and a little bit larger circle. Maybe same thing over here. Circle, circle, circle. Sometimes if you see a bubble, you will see highlights and reflections. That's light bouncing off a curved surface. To show that on this, uh, on this bubble, what I want to do is just draw a little square inside and kind of up in the corner of each one of those. Circles don't have corners. Yes, you're right. I mean like... Up here. Okay. Square, square, square to look like some reflections. Now, next thing I think we need in our picture, I think we need a jellyfish. I don't like jellyfish because they sting, but I do like the way that they move. They undulate. That's a good word, undulate. It means to move with a wave-like motion. I'm gonna start my jellyfish by taking a letter C and rolling it on its side. Let me show you up here. I'm just going to take the letter C, like that, and upside down U is the same kind of thing. From underneath this, what I'm going to do is just draw some squiggly lines.
these don't have to be parallel. And then, since jellyfish are invisible and you can see through them, what I like to do is to do a dotted line inside, because you can see some structures inside a jellyfish if you look closely at it. So I'm just going to draw a dotted line that goes up, down, up again, down. Kind of looks a little bit like a person in there going, ah, jellyfish, ah! I think I want to put some seaweed in my picture. Now the way I like to do seaweed, it kind of comes up from the ground and is twisting and turning in the ocean currents. I'm going to start right down here in the bottom left hand corner of my picture. I'm just going to draw a line that kind of curves gently going up and down. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to come back down starting from the top. I'm going to try to keep it as narrow and pointy as I can. I'm going to start right here at the top and this line is kind of just going to crisscross over that line, keeping it really narrow, really close together. I might do two or three of those, maybe some short ones, maybe some tall ones, and you can just kind of scatter those wherever you feel like you'd like some seaweed. And back down. But now, I think we might want to put some more fish. I do want to show you how to do one that I call the kissy fish. The reason why I call it the kissy fish is that it starts off with a number eight. Let me show you. A line that goes up and then down and crisscrosses over itself. That's a number eight. Now behind that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a teardrop shape and if you remember, a teardrop shape starts pointy, gets rounder at the bottom. But we're going to roll that on its side. And I'm going to do the fat part right down here at the bottom. I'm going to go up and come back, down and come back up, like that. So we have a fish with the big kissing lips. Again, I need to put an eye. Now, what if you want to put a small eye? You just put a little dot. What if you want a little bit bigger of an eye. Well, you put a circle around it. Can you do more than just that? Sure, you can add as much as you want. I also want to put some gills on my kissing fish. Two or three little curved lines, just like we do with our shark. And I might want to put a little side flipper or a fin. Just a triangle on the side there. Now, we need a tail and we need some fins. So for the fins, Sort of the same way I did with the, uh, the fish up here above it. I'm going to curve a line, though, with this up and back, down and back to meet it. And I'm going to do this, the tail the same way. I'm going to curve a line up and back, curve a line down and back, and connect them with a letter C. Now, how should we color this one? That's entirely up to you. It needs some lines, some shapes, maybe some polka dots, maybe some whatever kind of designs you like to put on it. I'm going to just make an indication of where the coloring would be. The top uh, would be colored, the bottom edge would be white. Wow, our sea is filling up with stuff and that's great. Now, you could also try to do any of the other shapes. Like if you want to put a second shark in there, or if you want to put other types of fish and things like that, you could certainly do that. Maybe we need an octopus in our picture. I'm going to use this space right over here to show an octopus. Now I'm going to start a bit like I did with the, the jellyfish where I took a letter U and put it upside down. This time I'm going to make it more like an upside down letter C. Now from each edge of this C, I'm going to draw a wavy line off to one side, a wavy line off to the other side. Now it might go off the edge of your page and if it does, that's fine. You might remember from our outer space drawing that tentacles are wide near the body and they're skinny and pointy at, away from the body. So I'm going to try to do that here. I'm going to start at the point and make a line that kind of gets a little bit fatter as it goes. Same thing over here. Starts, gets a little bit pointier. And then I'm going to use that space to show maybe another couple of legs here. And again, fill in that space, making the legs pointy. 
you might know that an octopus has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight legs. That's why it's called octopus, because it has eight, eight legs. Octagon, octopus. This only has four though. Yeah, you're right. The way an octopus's legs or tentacles work is they go all the way around the body. We're only seeing one side of it, so we can't see all eight at the same time. However, we can, if you're a stickler for scientific details, we can put some tentacles back behind this. Let me show you how. I'm going to start where the legs are, and I'm just going to kind of curve a line up, and then have it come back and meet the leg. Same thing on the other side. Starts from where the legs meet the body, goes up, comes back down. So if you want to put two more sort of hidden in between the other legs, you can do that. Maybe another one here. And maybe one more for fun. Now the next thing we need is some suction cups for our tentacles. The suction cups, again, you might remember from our outer space drawing. And by the way, if you haven't seen our outer space drawing, it's fun. You should do it. If you remember from our outer space drawing, a line of circles along the bottom edge of tentacles will look like the suction cups. So you just pick one side, and it's okay if the circles go off the edge of that leg. Now on some of these back legs, if you want to show more than just one row of circles, you could do that and it would make it sort of look like you're seeing the whole underside of that leg. I have my octopus, but she doesn't have much personality, so let's give her some eyes. Easiest way to do some eyes, I'm going to do a circle right over here, and a circle right next to it, and I need to put the pupils of the eyes. The pupils, by the way, are the little dark spots that show you where you're looking. I'm going to have mine looking towards my shark, because that's where I'd be looking. I'm going to put them right over here. As I've said before, different eyebrows tell us different things. Now, if you want the octopus to look angry, a letter V up there would do it. If I want my octopus to look scared, I'm going to put two curving lines like that. Like, uh, I don't know, there's a shark coming this way. Our picture's filling up pretty fast, but we do have some spaces down here on the ground for a couple of other little creatures that I want to show you how to draw. One thing I always loved to find when I was a kid was sand dollars. Now sand dollars are little tiny creatures about that big around uh, that kind of walk around the bottom of the ocean on, uh, on little, a whole bunch of little feet. They're so cool. The easiest way to draw a sand dollar is just to start with a circle. Sand dollars have five little openings. I don't know why it's five, but they just do. So what I'm going to do is put a little tiny hot dog shape at the top, one at each edge, and two at the bottom. Now in the middle, they have kind of a little design that almost looks exactly like a star. That's a sand dollar. Another thing I might want to put in is a starfish. Now, if you remember from our outer space drawing, an easy way to draw a star is to think of someone with a pointy head and pointy hands and pointy legs. Those aren't my legs, but you know, pointy legs. Except this time, instead of drawing straight edges, I'm going to draw them a little bit wavy. So right over here I have some space. I'm going to draw a curvy edged letter upside down letter V, a curvy hand, and two curvy legs. That's kind of a wiggly wavy star. Now the next thing I want to do, I'm going to put five lines, one in the middle of the top V, one in the middle of each of these V's, one in the middle of each of these V's. And then I might want to put some just little shading lines to show the bumpy, irregular surface of a starfish. We might want to put another type of seashell, and I want to start with the letter V. 
and I'm going to put kind of a roughly wavy line across the top of that. Kind of goes up and then down. I'm going to put some lines that go towards the center of that V. And then I'm going to put a little triangle on each side of the bottom edge. Now that's one way to do it, but you can do other types of shells very similar to that. What if we start with a letter V and put a curve line across the top, some lines that go towards the middle of the V and a triangle on each side. Now there's only one thing left to do with our picture and that is to sign it. Artists usually sign their pictures in the bottom right hand corner and I've tried to leave some room for that. And I also like to date it. Hope you had fun drawing along with me this time for our underwater scene. Remember, Quest for the Golden Butterfly is out soon from Tiki Fez Comics. We'll see you next time. <laughs>